Starting along with Roy Kiefer. The stakes are high. The mid pen second half championship. James Buchanan in Gettysburg. We're at Waynesboro. Looks like a possible Donnybrook. Well, this should be a real good ball game, Jeff. Even though Gettysburg has beaten uh, James Buchanan twice during the regular season, that's all gone now. Now it's a new night, and this should be a great ball game. It's a second half championship for Buchanan. Actually, it's the whole championship for Gettysburg. They That's win right. tonight, it's all over. This is potentially a championship game because Gettysburg, of course, won the first half. They won 26 consecutive conference games, finally knocked off by Northern. That's what set up this playoff tonight. Buchanan beat Northern. Their only loss during the uh, second half was to Gettysburg at the Wigwam by about 20 points. Yeah. So uh, how does... Uh, uh, Coach Heckman come in here and try to turn the tables against the Warriors? Well, a couple things. First of all, I think he's got to say to his team that that game was played at Gettysburg. That's a home court advantage, and right now they're not at home. This is a neutral site. That's the first thing he's got to impress upon his team. Second thing he's got to impress upon his team is that week, that game against uh, Buchanan, a game later that week against Shippensburg, this Gettysburg team played as well as any Gettysburg High School team I've ever seen. That was a great week for those young men. They've been a little flat last week. A couple road games, struggled and lost in Northern, struggled and pulled it out at the end of the game against Susquehanna to set up this second half playoff. And uh, I think the coach has got to be, Coach Heckman for James Buchanan has got to be telling him, look, Gettysburg isn't as good as they played two weeks ago. And uh, James Buchanan did have some outstanding outside shooting in the second half of that game. They came with a lot of full court pressure defense for some turnovers so that might be one of the keys for them tonight uh, on the one hand play the tough defense try to force the Warriors to turn the ball over and maybe uh, try to get the big guys in foul trouble for the Warriors that's what happened the first game up at James Buchanan both Troy Kessel and Greg Richardson got in foul trouble up there that's what made that a close game that was a three or four point ball game with about three minutes to go and then Gettysburg with their foul shooting that they've had all year made a lot of one and ones down the stretch and it opened up to about 11 or 12 point margin at the finish it wasn't that big a game it was a much closer game than the final score was the game at Gettysburg quite frankly two weeks ago was a bigger game than the final score was the fourth quarter you can and actually cut into the lead a little bit near the end of the game to cut into the lead a little bit Gettysburg actually played better than that final score shows it was two big spurts in that game the end of the first half Gettysburg had a big spurt and coming out to start the second half they opened up a 20 point working margin at that point it was all over Buchanan's got to avoid those spurts and I think you're right about the pressure I look for coach Heckman to use a lot of full court pressure tonight especially when Gettysburg goes to the bench and they have to hit the glass because Gettysburg totally dominated them on both the offensive and the defensive board uh, they've got some decent sized players in, uh, in his song and uh, some of the other uh, players out there for James Buchanan. But uh, Richardson and Kessel and Raffensperger really did the job on the blocks. The big advantage Gettysburg, and they've had it against almost every team they played this year, it's not with the front line rebounding, it's with the guards. It's with Mark Raffensperger, Brian Lindsay, and Brandon Streeter being six, eight inches sometimes taller than the people covering them. And that's where Gettysburg's been able to control the boards, not with maybe Kessel and Richardson, but with the other three all going to the glass, too. Attacking en masse, if you will, uh, under the board. So that's some of the keys for the contest here tonight. Uh, things are a few moments away from getting started. Coach Dooley brings his Warriors in here 17-5 and five overall. James Buchanan 17-6. and six. They're both going to be in the districts. Uh, this is just to see who comes out on, on top of the conference. For James Buchanan, though, not a simple assignment. Should they win tonight, they've got to come right back. Uh, I think it's here again tomorrow night. Well, I don't think they've named the place yet, but it's definitely tomorrow night, and I think chances are it will be here. And that's real tough for Buchanan because that'll be three games and three nights for them. They also played last night to get here tonight, beat a tough Shippensburg team by eight points. The other key tonight that we haven't mentioned is a little bit of an injury for Gettysburg. Troy Kessel's been bothered by a sprained arch in his foot. He sat out the game against Susquehanna the other night. He played, but not anywhere near 100% against Northern. Right now, assistant coach Mike Lilly tells me they put Troy at about 90%. 90% of Troy Kessel is pretty good. So if that estimate is right, I think he'll be okay tonight. If Coach Sully has to go to the bench, I think he's got the deeper bench as well, based on what we've seen in the uh, first two contests. But we'll see how it all turns out. We're only moments away from tip-off. Should be a good one, Jeff. Sit back and get ready to enjoy high school basketball here on Adams Community Television. We'll return. We're getting ready for the introduction of the starting lineups. We are on a 72-hour tape delay basis. 
You're watching this game on February 28th. And this is February 25th as we get it into the can. And we're going to break for the anthem. We'll be right back with the introductions. Well, you fans just missed an inspiring version of the national anthem. I think the artist may have been Jiminy Cricket, but I'm not sure. And uh, the officials for today's games, Joe Lindsay, Don Eshelman, and Jim Weikert, they're going with the triumvirate of zebras today, Roy. Well, I understand that's how the PAAA runs their championships and might as well get used to it. Both these teams are going to be playing in that tournament next week. They might as well get used to the three officials tonight. James Buchanan has the home county advantage, such as it is, and a lot of their loyal supporters are here tonight. The starters for Buchanan are being introduced. Point guard Mike Heckman. His counterpart, Brandon Streeter for the Warriors. Andy Angle joins Mike Heckman in the backcourt. Mark Raffensperger does likewise for Gettysburg, the thousand point scorer. Tony Heckman. And Troy Kessel will get the start on that gimpy wheel. Todd Fox in the forecourt. Greg Richardson for the Warriors and Rod Hissong, the aircraft carrier in the middle for JB. The fifth starter for Gettysburg sophomore, Brian Lindsay. James Buchanan is coached by Dick Heckman. His assistant, Mike Heckman. Jim Dooley, the running Warriors mentor, and his aide, Mike Lilly. Well, this uh, Jim is lousy with Heckman's tonight. I don't mean to say they're lousy players or coaches, but we got enough of them here tonight. No question. Three uh, Heckman's on the roster, two coaching Heckman's, so uh, Heckman quintet. My guess is the uh, female Heckman's are all in the stands. Quiet at the Heckman house tonight. Either that or they're at home watching the Tanya Nancy Kerrigan show. Jeez, I guess we can say who won since uh, we're not going to be shown till Monday night, huh, Jeff? CBS can't uh, do anything to us. We're announcing it now. Well, you can enlighten me. Who did win? Askiana Bayul from uh, Soviet Union. She overcame that leg gash. She did indeed. Kerrigan finished second, and uh, Surya, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the Lin or Lee girl from uh, China finished third. Well, nice job, Nancy. Let the endorsements roll. <laughs> I'm going to Disney World. His song and Richardson jump center. Fox controls for the Rockets. Opening possession of the game for eight minute quarters at the high school level. And Fox dragged the pivot foot. First turnover. I think we'll see a lot of that early in the game, Jim. Both these teams are up, and I think you'll see some nervousness. The other thing we're seeing right away is that full court press that we expected. Good crowd in the spacious cavern that is. Another travel call. The Waynesboro facility is quite large, but a lot of fans from both schools are here. Yeah, it may not look it on the camera, but this is a big crowd, Jeff. A lot of people here tonight. Angle threw it off the foot of Kessel. Kessel matched up on Fox to begin with Richardson and his song underneath. Uh, Todd, Heckman, or Todd Heckman has uh, Mark Raffensperger, Mike Heckman on Brandon Streeter, and Angle and Lindsay match up out front. And Angle gives away about six inches, as you mentioned, to Brian Lindsay. Fox on the baseline, rattled it around and down. That's too easy, Jeff. Gettysburg can't give up the baseline that easily. Two nothing Rockets. Hey, 
entry pass, Kessel to Richardson to tie it at two. And that's a tough entry pass from on top of the key like that. Usually you want to be out on the wing more or foul line extended. Excellent pass by Troy Kessel. Hisong kicks it back out again. Tony Heckman. Fox looks to go baseline again and does. 4-2, Rockets, Todd Fox with all four points for JB. Yeah, and almost identical plays. Paul Plank providing the lens work tonight. Tom Sixis and Brian Kiefer on stats. Adam Kiefer helping out with the setup as well. Nice no-look pass, angle, beautiful pass. Fox mixed the layup on a great feed from Mike Heckman. And now Heckman will shoot the tray. He got some hang time on the rim, but dropped it through. 7-2, JB, and they go to that zone press defense. It's about three-quarter court this time instead of full court extended. Raffensperger can't get it. And his song with a rip. Tony Heckman fires off the back rim, and Raffensperger's there for the pull. But Tony Heckman with the steal, no call. Todd Fox, double teamed and came up short of the rim. Raffensperger to Kessel who walked. That's two layups, Gettysburg's blown on the same kind of play. One thing Mark Raffensperger might want to do is make that a bounce pass, it's easier to handle. So the officials getting warmed up as well. They've each called a traveling violation. Vociferous Rooters for the Warriors, the sixth man organization here in full evidence. Another steal for Mark Raffensperger. Brandon Strader has a shot blocked. Good hustle to try to get it back. But it's Angle who comes with it ahead to Fox. Nice pass to Heckman who blew the chippy. Strader fouled, or rather blocked the shot against Todd Fox. And now Raffensperger away with it. Clean block by Brandon Streeter. Richardson, second chance opportunity, and he has all four points for the Warriors, 7-4. Right now, Mark Raffensperger, a little bit out of the flow for Gettysburg, trying to do maybe a little bit too much. Brian Lindsay with a carom. Streeter couldn't get it. Lindsay missed with a follow. Raffensperger, Third chance opportunity, converts it, and he's fouled a chance to tie. And sometimes that's what you need to get started. Mark missed a couple of tough shots, but right there, down in the paint, got the loose ball, laid it up and in. Maybe that'll get him started. Pekovnik and Brian Jones into the game, and uh, Coach Dooley goes to that substitution pattern to try to keep Kessel and Streeter fresh. Well, that's been a standard substitution pattern for the last three quarters of this season. There's something Gettysburg hasn't done all year and they can't do tonight. They got to make their foul shots. His song will shoot the J. Soft touch. Just like that yo-yo move, walking the dog. He got it to caress the rim and fall. Soft touch and a soft rim on that side, I think, Jeff. Pekovnik the double team. Gets it to Lindsay, 9-6, JB with a lead, 4.05 to go in the first quarter. And Buchanan drops back into a 2-3 zone. This is the first time they've really gotten into a set half-court defense. Raffensperger, no. Pekovnik couldn't gather in the rebound, and Andy Angle goes the other way with it for James Buchanan. Fox kicks it back to Mike Heckman, and now he is called for the travel. Well, that's two each way, and as we predicted, both teams a little bit tight. It's a big game. They're both got their minds moving a little bit faster than their feet can go. All the players are trying to do a little bit too much. They just need to relax a little bit right here. Richardson and Lindsay will be spelled. Streeter and Kessel right back out there. Bryant Jones will shoot the J. Bukovnik, good follow, and he's fouled. 
Looked like it's on 13. I think that's Tony Heckman. And that's something the that Gettysburg can do. Even if they miss that first shot with that size advantage, they should be able to get their share of offensive rebounds. And that's not a shot you normally see Brian Jones take. However, when you have a wide open 12 footer and you don't take it, sometimes that does more harm than uh, taking a shot. In that instance, they got the rebound and a chance to score from the line. I agree, Jeff. If you're that wide open, you have to take that shot, unless it's a clutch situation and you're looking for a particular player or a particular score. The Kovnik's on the board. 9 7, James Buchanan. Andy Stoner into the lineup for Coach Heckman. Pekovna kept it alive. Oh, Warriors didn't get the call. Coach Dooley wanted the deflection. That's either got to be a foul or an out of bounds off James Buchanan. There's no way that ball was just thrown there. Fox cross court to Stoner. Got the layup over Pekovnik and Jones. 11-7, they go right back to that two-thirds zone trap. And now they fall back into the man-to-man. -man. So they just gave it the, the briefest of looks. Kessel, not really there. Threw it behind Raffensperger, and now Buchanan returns the favor. Lindsey and Richardson get ready to check back in for the Warriors. And Streeter. That's a flat out horrible call, Jeff. There's no way that was a blocking foul, or no way that was a charge. No call on that play. There was very little contact. No player gained an advantage. That's just a terrible call. I would agree. Should have been a no call. Uh, nice emoting by Mike Heckman, though. Well, to be perfectly honest, you get more contact than that when you slap high fives before the game. So the starters are back in there now for the Warriors. Bukovnik scored a point in his brief stint. And uh, Buchanan looks like they're going to try to spread it out and run some clock. Fox is short with it. And now fouled on the follow. Not a shooting foul, of course. We're Adams Community Television, Channel 25 on your Salmon's Dial. Join us every Monday night at 7 for local sports. Hopefully next week we'll be providing some coverage from the sectionals at Biglerville High School. High school wrestling coming your way. Lindsay gets in the paint and can't get the... Shot, but Richardson working hard on the glass. Got it down. He's got six of the nine Gettysburg points. Yeah, right now Richardson's keeping him in it with his second effort off the boards. And they haven't marked the basket yet, Jeff. Coach Jim Dooley's all over the official. They still haven't put the... They haven't put the points on. They didn't even, no, they did. They got them all. Oh, okay, now. all right. It's 11 10. Kessel with a push. Troy Kessel has to stay focused. He can't get into early foul trouble. That is his first, I believe. Yeah, and those are the kind of fouls you don't want to see. Troy, in some ways, is a little like Greg Richardson. They tend to pick up fouls in bunches. You don't want those fouls in midcourt. You want Greg and Troy picking up fouls under the basket. Let's not forget Troy Kessel is a linebacker, and uh, sometimes that mentality emerges. Angle, look to penetrate, and now Lindsey called for a hack. And Gettysburg's got to use some poise here. Buchanan is definitely trying to spread the defense, trying to run not, I wouldn't say a delay game, but sort of a four corners type. They're still looking to score, but they really want to spread the court and run some clock. And Gettysburg's going to have to show some poise on the defensive end against it. Now the Warriors double team angle. Steal by Richardson. What they did was they went 1-3-1 one, one zone against that spread offense. 
Tough call against Mark Raffensperger. Yeah, that's a bad call. Mark went up. Number 12 angle in boxing out. Just pushed him about 10 feet. The official way back here at three-quarter court saw the bodies moving. Thought Raffensperger was over the back. It was exactly the other way around. Yeah, it looked like he really made an acrobatic move to pull that board in somewhat one-handed and uh, unfortunately drew the foul. 11-10 Buchanan. 1.25 to go in the first. Happy whistles out there right now. They're calling everything, and that's Brandon Streeter's second. Yeah, and that's not good. We have more calls being made than we have basketball being played. I don't think we've gone more than 30 seconds of clock time without a whistle being blown. And in a championship game, you like to see the kids play, not the officials play. And that's something we talked about at the outset, whether uh, adding that third official is a, such a good idea. Stoner too hard. His song fouled by Richardson. And there's also a certain chemistry that takes place between the officials. And you're tampering with that delicate balance when you add the third member of the team. 12-10, James Buchanan. Tony Heckman replaces Andy Angle in the lineup. They discuss their assignments. So Brandon Streeter out of the contest with two fouls. His song hits them both. It's 13-10. Nice baseline move by Mark Raffensperger. Draws the Warriors back within a point. Beautiful glide there to avoid contact and get the shot off. Heckman nearly lost it. And Coach Dooley thought Mike Heckman traveled. Oh, I think he did, Jeff. And considering the way they've made other calls today, that's a call that should have been made. Warriors stay in that zone. Brian Jones working hard out at the point of that attack. And now Greg Richardson comes out to double team. So Warriors working hard on the zone. And Todd Fox threw up a prayer unanswered. So we've Completed one quarter of play. James Buchanan 13, Gettysburg 12. Quick scoring totals, Jeff, for Buchanan. His song has four. Uh, Mike Heckman three. Stoner two. Fox with four. For Gettysburg, Raffensburger four. Uh, Richardson with seven. And Mike Pekovnik with one off the bench. Gettysburg's got to get Brian Lindsay and Brandon Streeter into the offense. Uh, shooting percentages for Gettysburg, and frankly, they're not good. They're 5 for 15 from the field. Mark Raffensperger only 2 for 5. Brian Lindsay 0 for 2. Brandon Streeter 0 for 3. From the foul line, they're only uh, shooting 50% from there. So this is not a typical Gettysburg performance yet. And the Warriors definitely with the early edge on the glass. That's been the key to Richardson scoring the second chance opportunities. Well, they've had some second chance opportunities, but to be quite honest, I think Buchanan's done a nice job on the board so far. They've sort of neutralized that big advantage for Gettysburg. There's been an advantage, but it hasn't been a big one. It hasn't been decisive. There's that back cut to Richards, or, uh, Raffensperger, but uh, good defense by Buchanan stopped the play. Buchanan in the man-to-man. -man. Kessel. Tough pass, good hands by Rafi to handle it. Too far into the basket to convert the layup. Stoner with the layup, and that's Fox, who's fouled. And he converts the layup, second foul on Richardson. That's something you can't let happen. Gettysburg can't let Buchanan run the court like that. That's about the third time they've beaten the Gettysburg team down the floor, and Jim Dooley won't be happy with that kind of effort. 
15 to 12, Fox has six. A chance to add to that total. So Streeter and Richardson each with two fouls. 16-12, James Buchanan. Kessel kicks it out to Streeter, and now it's Lindsay who traveled. And that little drop step, and he's been called about four or five times already here in the first half. Every time a player jab steps, they're making the call. And now his song returns the favor. Yeah, his son got called for the travel there, but actually it wasn't his fault. The pass put him in a position where there was absolutely nothing he could do with the ball. Rockets go to the zone trap. Lindsay too hard off the back rim, but Richards is there for the follow. He's got nine. Unbelievable rebound. Greg took off at the foul line and came down with that one. Richardson's keeping the Warriors in this game single-handedly. Brian Lindsay with another rebound. Good bounce pass to Streeter. And Raffensperger with a follow, tied at 16. Well, I think with this tie, Jeff, with about six and a half to go in the second quarter, we can say it. We got a Donnybrook going here. Praise the Lord. Our prayers have been answered. It's going to be a good one. Kessel nearly picked up a cheap foul. Fox with Kessel on him. Warriors appear to be in the man to man. JB tries to spread it out. Tony Heckman, no. And Kessel with a carom. Strong move to the hoop by Greg Richardson. And an excellent pass again. I think that was Troy Kessel one more time. Richardson's perfect, five for five from the field. He's got 11 points to lead all scorers and gives the Warriors a two-point lead, 18-16, with five minutes and change in the half. Todd Fox launches one. Nice hustle by Hisong. Stoner can't get the follow. And now Tony Heckman knocked it out of bounds. And one thing Jim Dooley can't be happy with, right now Gettysburg's are getting out scrap. The loose balls, the 50-50 plays, right now are going to Buchanan. Sean Zimmerman replaces his song. I think we got Mike Heckman back in the game too, Jeff. So Stoner is replaced by Mike Heckman. They don't need the three seconds. They got the travel. I didn't see anybody in the lane. No, Greg Richardson was posted up about a foot outside the lane. I don't know what they were calling for there, the Buchanan fans. Coach Julie wants to chat about it. 4.33 to play in the second quarter. His Warriors clinging to a two-point lead, 18 to 16. That's again, Jeff, this has been a real tight game. I think both teams, an awful lot of travel calls, an awful lot of unforced errors, if you will. Perhaps by the second half, these kids will have some of that nervous excitement out of their system, and that'll settle down and play the kind of basketball that both these teams have played throughout the course of the season. I think the coaches enjoy this type of atmosphere because it's going to help them both get ready for next week, regardless of what happens uh, tonight. Yeah, this is a tournament atmosphere. Both teams, uh, uh, it's good preparation for both. Gettysburg is probably going to see a, a little bit bigger, a little bit quicker team against Cumberland Valley. 
but uh, again, this is good pressure type situation to get them used to playing under that kind of pressure. Gettysburg shooting a little bit better this quarter. They're up to 38.1% now on eight for 21 from the field. And or actually, that's Greg Richardson. That's what I was going to say. Without him, they're about 10% uh, from the three field. Three for 16 without him. That's a little bit below 20%. Kessel with a near steal. Fox fouled by Richardson, and that is his third. No, I think that falls on Troy Kessel from behind, and that'll be his second. Okay, well, that's a break for the Warriors. Richardson oh, no. hit the deck. Greg Richardson was in perfect position. Troy Kessel hammered him from behind. It's a good call. I just meant that the fact that Richardson not picking up his third foul, uh, but now it's Kessel, Streeter, and Richardson all with two, and that which could, is okay. Well, it is right now, but if either of them picks up their third foul quickly, or if two out of the three of them pick up their third foul quickly in the first half, that could spell trouble for Gettysburg. His song in for Tony Heckman as Fox hit the opener. He's got one more. So Fox with eight points, or is it nine? I'm sure uh, nine points. He hit one from the line, so he leads scorers for James Buchanan, we're tied at 18. Brian Lindsay, no. Raffensperger tried to tip it home. Couldn't get it. Nice hustle. Buchanan fans thought it was a bear hug, but uh, Raffensperger drew the jump ball, possession arrow to the rocket. Frankly, I think Gettysburg may have gotten away with one there. Not on Raffensperger, but on Greg Richardson trying to reach around from behind and help Mark. Angle shoots it from beyond the arc. Sean Zimmerman with a tough follow. 28. Zimmerman, Zimmerman may have got away with one there. Looked like he gave Mark Raffensperger a nice little shove in the back. Brian Lindsay didn't get the call. And James Buchanan quickly the other way. Angle from way out there. Raffensperger with a rebound. His song rips it down for the Rockets, and now Fox is fouled. Again, Gettysburg is getting beat down the court. They can't let that continue to happen. Brian Lindsay called for the foul, and, and according to Brian Kiefer, Raffensperger with seven rebounds already here in the first half. Fox has got 10, three-point lead for Buchanan. And Buchanan hasn't missed a foul shot yet. They're shooting very well from the line. <laughs> Tried to jinx him, it didn't work. Fox has got 11, so he and Richardson leading scores in a contest with 11 each. Brian Lindsay can't seem to draw a foul, but made the layup. Warriors are back within two, 22-20. Brian really needed that one to go down. He's had a tough time at the start of this game, and he really needed something to drop for him. Kessel. And that's his third. 
I don't think it was Kessel. I think it was, uh, I think it was, Bra or excuse me, Mark Raffensperger stepping up. Let's see when they put it up on the board. I believe that was Mark Raffensperger trying to draw the charge. Yeah, I saw Jim Weikert signal at 35, though. Oh, that's a terrible call. He wasn't anywhere near that play. If you're going to call the foul, it's on Mark Raffensperger. It's not on 35, it's on 30. Regardless, Todd Fox is at the line to shoot a pair. And he continues his dabbling in perfection. He's five for five from the line. Or four for four. Six, six for six. six. Oh, we'll get it right one of these times. Thank you, Brian. And now, seven for seven. So Fox is having a big game, scoring-wise, for Jays Buchanan. He checks out. He's got 13 points, a baker's dozen. Buchanan by four. 2-10 in the half. It's 24-20, Rocket. Bukovic and Jones back in there. Kessel sits with the 3,000. Brian Lindsay joins him on the Pines. Richardson, nice turnaround with his song in his face. Six for six for Greg. So he matches Fox point for point. They've each got 13. Tony Heckman. Got away with the travel and used that soft rim. Part of that problem was Greg Richardson went for the block instead of trying to take the charge. If he'd stood still, I think he might have had him. 26-22. Bryant Jones. Richardson, no, his song with the board. And they're daring Jones to take that little 10-foot jump exactly. shot. Exactly. Under a minute. And now Brian Jones called for the foul. Rockets are in a bonus, so Heckman will shoot the one and one. three-man officiating crew can't figure out that's the ninth foul against Gettysburg and Buchanan should be shooting. Heckman hits the front end to give Buchanan its biggest lead of the game. 27-22. Lindsay in there for an offensive infusion. Replacing Brian Jones. I think what you see is Gettysburg hold for one shot here. That's why Lindsay comes in for Jones. Rockets continue perfect from the line. It's been the difference in the contest at this juncture. 28-22. James Buchanan, their biggest lead all night. Warriors. Look for the last shot. 20 seconds. Lindsay and Streeter play a little game of catch. Ten seconds to go in the half. They better try to look for a shot now. Fakovnik fires too long. And the half ends with Buchanan out in front, and their fans are pumped. They lead Gettysburg 28-22. We'll return with Roy on round ball. Seconds away from tip-off here in the second half. Statistical recap, Roy Keeper. Well, very quickly, Jeff, the big statistic right now, James Buchanan, 11 for 11 from the foul line. Gettysburg, two for four. That is 11 fouls against Gettysburg, four against James Buchanan. And if that's the way the numbers keep coming out in the second half, there's absolutely no way Gettysburg can win that game with that kind of officiating. 
Coach Heckman and Coach Dooley enjoying the intensity of the rivalry, but not losing their sense of humor. They just had a, an animated exchange at midcourt. And Gettysburg will start with possession. Kessel to inbound. See if they run a backdoor cut. No, they're going to try to run a three off the bat to Brian Lindsay. It's not there. There's the backdoor cut. And Mark got shoved. And no call. He stepped on the baseline. Gettysburg faithful would argue he had some help. But no call. And Buchanan leads by six. Todd Fox had a career day in the first half. He had 13 points. He was seven for seven from the line. Nice steal by Mark Raffensperger. Good passing by the Warriors. Richardson has 15. Excellent feed by Brandon Streeter. 15 to the 24 is great for Greg, but it's not good for Gettysburg. Gettysburg's got to get Brandon Streeter and Brian Lindsay involved in the offense. Lindsay held to only two points, and Streeter, is he scoreless? Yeah, he is, Jeff. 0 for 4 from the field. His song just did a little hop, skip, and a jump, but no call. Angle. Combined, Lindsay and Streeter are 1 for 10 in the first half. Bengal got the three, rattled it around and down. 31-24, biggest lead so far for James Buchanan. Brandon Streeter cross court to Mark Raffensperger. No, Richardson kept it alive but tapped it out of bounds. Yeah, nice try by Greg. Kept the ball alive, avoided going over the back. Right now, Buchanan's getting all the loose balls and all the breaks. And they're making those breaks. They're hustling. They're scrapping. Buchanan playing right now like they want to return. They want to be playing basketball tomorrow night. Brian Lindsay with a big yank. For three, too hard. And his song is there to clear for the Rockets. Buchanan three on two again. Nice block. And now Heckman tied up Richardson. Possession hour to Chase Buchanan. Brian Jones for checks Todd in Kessel. for Troy Kessel, who's got the three fouls. Well, and Todd uh, looks like he's a little bit out of his game right now. See if Jim tries to calm him down and gets him back in there fairly quickly. Boy. Todd Fox inbounds to Mike Heckman. Fox with a pull up, yes. 15 points. Todd Fox having a huge game for James Buchanan. He was a virtual non-factor the last time these two teams played. A nine point advantage for the Warriors. And Coach Dooley needs to go to the drawing board. Yeah, Gettysburg has no intensity right now this half. Buchanan has beaten them to every loose ball, getting every 50-50 rebound, and they're also shooting very well. So Gettysburg's got to find a spark from somewhere. Coach Dewey just spent several seconds giving Brian Lindsay some personal encouragement. About two minutes left in the first half, Jeff. I think Gettysburg's been outscored 17 to 6. And that's a big run, and Gettysburg can't let those kinds of stats continue. Man to man here for Buchanan. I bet you they only show this one trip.
Lindsay double dribbled. That's the call. But it looked like Heckman touched yeah. it. Heckman knocked the ball loose. Entry pass to his song. He's fouled by Richardson and he gets the basket. An 11 point lead for Jays Buchanan. That's the third on Greg Richardson. And his song will try to make the lead an even dozen. Already is. I think we're looking for a Baker's dozen. There it is. They just put up two points for that foul shot. Yeah, I don't think that's the right score. I'm befuddled by this turn of events. So James Buchanan continues their torrid shooting from the free throw line. There's a tie up, possession arrow to the Warriors. Now they've taken two points off the scoreboard. It's 36-24. Raffensperger's fouled and converts off the glass. Big play for Gettysburg. They really needed to do something on this trip. A chance to cut it back to single digits. 419 in the third. Mark Raffensperger's brother Ryan in attendance here tonight. Ryan will be in Philadelphia on Sunday covering the Syracuse women's basketball team's game against Villanova. Mark Raffensperger completes the three-point play, 26, 36, 27, and Raffi with eight. But uh, nine, excuse me. I can't count Tom Six's fingers. Greg Richardson called for his fourth foul, and that could loom hugely. He's got to get him out of there. That's the fourth foul on Greg Richardson. Pekovnik has to come up big now. Looked like a good block, but the ref saw it otherwise. His song. They're hitting everything. Have they missed yet from the free throw line? Not yet. They're about 14 for 14. That's it exactly, 14 for 14 from the line. And that translates into an 11 point advantage, nearly all of it coming from the stripe. Actually, they've got a 12 point advantage from the stripe. Raffensperger forced it up. And his song called for the hack on Kessel. Brandon Streeter did a nice job of keeping the ball alive. And his song over the back. Frankly, it looked to me like Mark was shoved when he went up for the jump shot, but they did get the second foul. Kessel to inbound. Brandon Streeter was stripped. Todd Fox walked with it. No basket. Don Eshelman with the call, and I believe it was the correct call. Well, excellent defense here by Mike Pekovnitz. Hustled back, set up to take the charge, and that's what called the, caused the travel. Pull up. Mark Raffensperger, no. And now Kessel with his fourth foul. He caught Tony Heckman in the mouth. 
Interesting scenario now for the Warriors with Kessel and Richardson each with four fouls. We're only in the third quarter. Sean Zimmerman replaces his song. Andy Stoner in there for Tony Heckman. Bryant Jones will go back in for Troy Kessel. Good call, he came down before he threw it. Up and down against Andy Angle with no particular place to go. And the Rockets turn it over, 38-27 with 3.12 to go in the third. Jeff Cook and Roy Kiefer Bringing you high school boys basketball, the Mid-Pen 3 second half championship game. And if Gettysburg can rally, they will be the overall champs of the Mid-Pen 3. Pekovnik from beyond the arc hits. Very big for Gettysburg to get some offense out of somebody besides Richardson and Raffensperger. Pekovnik has four. Nice move by Fox and Pekovnik on the foul. That's a good call. Mike went over the back on the foul. The Pekovnik really has a chance to come up big here. He hit the three. He's got four points overall. And he's a player who has really worked on fine tuning his game. Now's a chance to come to the front with Kessel and Richardson on the bench with four fouls. Stoner, no. And now Zimmerman calls for the hack on Mark Raffensperger. Full court look for Buchanan and the Warriors beat it easily. Just token pressure, Jeff. Just trying to bother him. 38-30. It went in, it went in. And it counts. He's giving it to him. I'm not sure the officials saw it go in. They still haven't put the no, points up the on the board. The scorekeeper hasn't put it on the board. The official came out. Now they're giving him the ball out of bounds. I don't understand that. I guess he the call was be good. before the shot. He signaled good. Maybe he was pointing to the floor. I don't know. Apparently, that's what he was doing, but... His song hit Raffensperger on the arm. No call. And now it converts the layup at the other end. Actually hit him on both arms and no call. 40 to 30. Buchanan with a 10-point lead. Under two minutes in the third quarter. An angle stripped it from Brian Jones ahead to Todd Fox. Angle launches one, no. Stoner back to angle again, no. And his son got away with another push from behind. So Rod Hissong has been able to tee off with impunity in the last minute or so. <laughs> Raffensperger, nice move to get his shot off. If they can get him the ball in the middle of that 2-3 zone, Mark can make things happen. Bukovnik with a big steal. Raffensperger, four quick points. And it's a six-point lead. The Warriors have cut the deficit in half, and Mark Raffensperger is really coming on offensively. 45 seconds in the quarter. The Rockets look to use clock. Yeah, they look to hold for one and see if Gettysburg can turn them over out of that 1-3-1 trap defense. Brian Jones is just all over the court, causing havoc. 25 seconds. Mike 
Heckman called for the travel. Great hustle by Brian Jones. Brian played back and forth that entire period of time, about 35, 40 seconds, and he's the one who caused the turnover with great hustle. Well, you don't have to show up in the scoring tables to be an impact. And Brian Jones helped to force that turnover. Warriors with a chance to cut it to four or less. And now we'll see if Gettysburg holds for one. There it is. Brian Lindsay couldn't hit the three. Raffensperger had a chance for the follow, no. And so after three quarters, Gettysburg trails James Buchanan 40 to 34. Well, that quarter, it was his song who picked it up for Buchanan, scoring seven points, including three for three from the line. Matched by Mark Raffensperger, who scored seven points for Gettysburg that quarter. Gettysburg's got to get Brandon Streeter and Brian Lindsay into the offense. Again, Brandon and Brian have combined right now for two points. They average probably around 20 points between the two of them. They've got to get on board this quarter. Eight minutes in regulation. Paul Plank providing the excellent lens work as usual and Tom Sixis and Brian Kiefer giving us more information than we could possibly utilize on stats. Excellent job, men. Pekovnik and Brian Jones stay in there. I think he's got to go at least two or three minutes with Richardson and Kessel on the bench. I look for him to come back in with about five minutes to go in the contest. My guess is to bring him back one at a time. And Gettysburg slowly but surely have improved their field goal shooting. They're up to 42 percent. Well, they shot 55-5 that quarter. Tony Heckman with a three, and his song with the histrionics. And I was wrong. There go Kessel and Richardson. The three-point play is good. It could be a five-point play. Or more, it could be six, because Buchanan gets the ball. It's not a shooting foul. Raffensperger called for the push underneath. The lead is back up to nine. penetrates and gets the layup. Where was the defense? The lead is back to 11. Angle fouled Richardson. I'm sorry, but I got to laugh. Uh, Angle went crazy after that call, and with all the breaks that they're getting from the officials tonight, he really ought to tone that down. Neither team in the bonus. Lindsey forced one. Lucky to get it back. Nice pass to Kessel. Good reverse layup. Excellent recognition by Brian Lindsey to spot the wide open Kessel for two. They just missed a double dribble there, Jeff. He bounced it when he caught it, picked it up, and bounced it to the basket. Smart play by Mike Heckman, called the timeout as he was about ready to be tied up. Brian Lindsay is shooting one for eight on the night. A nine-point lead. Buchanan with the ball.
Well, this conference championship means a great deal to both teams. The Warriors won it in their inaugural season last year. They love to repeat. They'll get two chances at it should they fall short in this game. They'll have a second title clash tomorrow. Todd Fox. No call. He just lost the ball on the way up. Might have been a bad call on the out of bounds. I don't think there was a foul, but it looked to me like Gettysburg might have been the team that hit it out of bounds. So the Warriors possibly get a break. They trail by nine. Dangerous pass. Nice job by Mike Heckman to beat the defense of Troy Kessel. The lead is back to 11. And that was another situation where Mark Raffensperger really didn't have anywhere to go. And that created the turnover. Nice pass, Lindsay to Richardson. Richardson with 17, but he's got four fouls. Well, at this point, you can't worry about those fouls. They got to create turnovers, and that's not the way to do it. Todd Fox has his first points of the half. Though he's got 17 all together, so he and Richardson each with 17 to lead their schools. James Buchanan by 11 with 5.34 to go in the fourth. 49 to 38. It's going to be very tough for Gettysburg right now. Somehow they got to create turnovers, and Buchanan just hasn't been turning the ball over since that first quarter when they got called for a couple traveling violations. The other thing is the way Buchanan's been shooting from the foul line, there's no way you can foul him and catch up that way. Gettysburg's got to create turnovers, and they're going to have to hit some threes. They can't have any empty trips from this point on. And Brandon Streeter still has not scored in the contest. Brian Lindsay with two. I think Lindsay and, uh, or excuse me, I think Raffensperger and Richardson have combined for 30 of the 38 points. Richardson with 17, Raffensperger with 13. Cross court to Raffensperger. He put up an air ball, and Kessel was fouled by Angle. Actually, I think it's going to be on Stoner from behind. You are correct, sir. Sixth foul against James Buchanan. Lindsay can't get the three. But the Warriors get possession. That's a good call. The Warriors fought over it, but it did roll off the Buchanan player's hand. His song slapped it out. So the Warriors will reload. 5-14, time beginning to be a factor. <laughs> Lindsay, too hard off the back rim. An angle with a rebound. And now Brian Lindsay with a frustration foul. And they're going to be shooting already. I believe that's the seventh. No, I'm sorry. That's only the sixth foul against Gettysburg. Gettysburg in the bonus, but they have one to give against Buchanan. Lindsay's got three fouls, and Coach Dewey's going to try to settle him down. Brian Jones re-enters the lineup. Buchanan turned it over. Dangerous cross-court pass from Todd Fox to Mike Heckman, and Heckman just couldn't control it. Probably not the right pass to make in that situation. So the Warriors, again, a chance to cut it to a single digit. Zimmerman back in there for his song. Oh, 
Heckman for Heckman, too. Strader, nice pass to Kessel. He's fouled. That would have been a big three-point play if Troy could have somehow got that ball down with one hand. Stoner called for the hack and Kessel to shoot too. <laughs> Lindsay for Jones. Both teams in a bonus from here on out. 426 on the game clock. Kessel converts. That's only his third point. Only seven free throw attempts in the game for the Warriors. Good play by Greg Richardson not to foul out of the game there. Yeah, smart play. But unfortunately, again, Buchanan with their hustle and scrap got that loose ball. The lead is 10. Fox. No. Blocked by Kessel, and he stepped on the line. Warriors starting to scrap for every loose ball, but Buchanan's been doing that all game long. Nice steal. And Kessel will shoot the one and one. He wanted to get rid of it more quickly. Actually, the I Rapids think shoot two. We'll see. One and one. Amazing. Yeah, I really thought he was trying to pass it to Raffensperger. I disagree. I thought he was trying to put the ball in the basket. As a team, the Warriors are shooting one for 10 from beyond the arc. I won't get it done. Kessel will shoot one and the bonus. 49-40, 403 on the clock. Kessel short with it. Zimmerman and Hissong battle over the rebound. And Mark Raffensperger created the turnover. Timeout, James Buchanan, 3.58 to play. The stage is set. High drama from Waynesboro. You know, this was a 12-point lead with six minutes to go. Gettysburg's got it down to nine. They could come up with a three-pointer, even a two-pointer here, cut that lead down to six or seven. With almost four full minutes to go, we've still got a heck of a ball game. Some First Amendment issues being debated. It's an emotional contest. The fans are really into this one, too. Richardson takes the jumper. Failed to draw iron. And Tony Heckman's there for the board. Probably not the shot Gettysburg wanted out of that trip, Jeff. Mark Raffensperger with a near steal. Great hustle. Oh. And Greg Richardson's gone. 
That's his fifth foul. And a technical on Jim Dooley. And Eric Maitland. Once again, the officials are playing the game instead of the players. Three twenty-five to play, and the Warriors are really up against it now. Richardson is gone. He's got five fouls. Double technical on the Gettysburg bench. Well, that's pathetic officiating. Whoever the gentleman is with the dark hair came running from 25 feet away, stepped in between the official that was talking with Jim Dooley, having a conversation, and started threatening him. That's pathetic. That's Joe Lindsay, the head referee. And Pekovnik back into the game. Well, if there is a return trip tomorrow night, for their own sake, I hope these same officials are not working the game. Well, the uh, coaches have to agree on the officiate, the officials, and I can be pretty sure Jim Dooley will not agree to these three for tomorrow night. Beautiful shooting. Angle hits them both. 51 to 40. And now he'll shoot the four technicals, and then they'll get the ball. It could be an eight-point trip. Or nine. They're still perfect from the line. Incredible shooting by James Buchanan. They shot the lights out from the charity stripe. An angle can do no wrong. He hits. They got two more to go yet. Yeah, he hits all four. He's trying to make it six. It's 53 to 40. Incredible free throw shooting by James Buchanan. Uh, I think 18 for 18 at this point. So Angle goes six for six on that flurry and they get the ball back. 55 to 40 with three minutes and 25 seconds to go. And what do you do against this Buchanan team that just shot the lights out from the free throw line? You're right, Roy, you can't foul them. No, nope. you can't get them to turn it over and you can't foul them. When you're behind going into the fourth quarter, that leaves you very few options. Pekovnik called for the foul. So Mike Heckman will shoot the one and one. Under three minutes to play. Brian Jones returns to the lineup. The fans becoming quite animated here in the bleachers, and uh, I'm not sure this is a safe place to be right now. Well, frankly, I think Buchanan came out and wanted this game more than Gettysburg. One disadvantage Gettysburg had, they came in tonight knowing they only had the neat win one out of two. Buchanan came in knowing it was sudden death, and they've played with the emotion that Gettysburg hasn't had, and their fans have had the emotion Gettysburg fans haven't had. Well, what are they, 20 for 20 from the free throw line? Let's see if we can work that up, Statman. It's unbelievable. 57 to 40. 22 for 22. Unbelievable. Bukovnik gets the runner. The lead is 15. And now Raffensperger fouls Angle. But I think Buchanan has sent a message here tonight. They're getting their confidence, and uh, I think they're starting to believe that they can knock the Warriors off two games in a row. Buchanan came out with a lot of confidence tonight. They've played an excellent ball game. They've played very smart. They've handled the ball well, and they've shot the lights out from the foul line, and that's been the difference. They have handled it extremely well. 23 
for 23 from the line. I don't think he can do it much better than that. Unbelievable. And Angles hit his last seven, make it eight in about the last 30 seconds of playing time. A 17 point advantage. And the Warriors have to think of threes. Pekovnik is long and Fox is there to clear. Smart play there by Angle. No fast breaks, so run some clock. Pekovnik with another foul. Coach Dooley is clearing the bench. Brent Conover, Mike Graham, Tony Jones, and Randy Lukowitz have just entered the fray. Twenty-four for twenty-four from the line. And Coach Dooley, 25 for 25, excuse me. The numbers are numbing. 26 out of 26 from the stripe. And it's a 19 point lead and Coach Dooley has capitulated or so it would seem. Heckman with a steal. And naturally, it goes in. So these two teams will go at it again tomorrow night. Timeout, Gettysburg. And the Rocket fans begin to exuberate. And rightfully so, they deserve it. Their team has played exceptionally well tonight, and they deserve to celebrate. They've handled the ball so well. The guard play by Mike Heckman and Andy Angle has been outstanding. Todd Fox really set the tone in the first half. He was aggressive going to the basket. He leads his team in scoring, but they've all contributed. And the ineffective shooting by Gettysburg has been the story. And they just made the announcement, same bat time, same bat channel, right here from Waynesboro. The title clash. We'll try to bring you an update on that game on this tape if we're able to do it. We're not going to be able to be here tomorrow night. But James Buchanan has sent a message that this Gettysburg team has been vanquished. Angle comes up with it. And give Northern some of the credit. I think Northern demonstrated that the Warriors could be had. And James Buchanan has built on that theme. And right now, they have left Warriors in their wake. They lead by 21, 63 to 42, with 74 seconds remaining. So the school named for our 15th president has led the way here today. They were on top by six at the break and they've just built on it since there. The double technical was the backbreaker. 
Seth Westbury hits the running jumper. And the lead is 23 with under a minute to play. Mike Graham has it slapped away by Westbury. And it was Jeff Brand who controlled. 40 seconds to go. James Buchanan will be the second half champions of the mid-pen three. Stoner with a J. First time, no, it's not Tom. They lost to uh, Mannheim Township, Scott Grable. Gotcha. Brandt pulls up. Amazingly, it didn't go in. Second chance opportunity by Rob Miller. Mike Graham will launch the three, no. And this one is in the books. 67 to 42, James Buchanan. These teams will reprise this tomorrow night. First half champion, Gettysburg versus second half champion, James Buchanan. What do you look for tomorrow night, Roy Keeper? Well, obviously, Buchanan's going to try to play the same game. They're going to try to play some pressure. They're going to try to drop back into that zone. Gettysburg's going to have to shoot a whole lot better than they shot tonight. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they made one three-point shot the entire night, and that's not Gettysburg's normal game. They're going to have to shoot a lot better than that tomorrow. Buchanan played with a lot of poise tonight. They played with a lot of emotion. They knew they were a one loss and out. Gettysburg had, knew they had to win one out of two. Buchanan came out here with more intensity. They played harder. They got the loose balls. They got the 50-50 rebounds. They deserved the win tonight. And what can you say about the free throw shooting? A perfect 26 out of 26. I've never seen anything like it at the high school level, have you? I can guarantee it won't happen tomorrow night. Excellent display of basketball. Congratulations to Coach Heckman and the Rockets. But tomorrow night, they wipe the slate clean and go at it again. For statisticians, Brian Kiefer and Tom Sixis and cameraman Paul Plank. Special thanks to analyst Roy Kiefer. This is Jeff Cook from Waynesboro. See you next Monday night, sports fans. Good night.